What's going on, everybody? Part of Fantasy Football Drafts, possibly the most fun part, taking those swings at the late round picks, those sleepers. Who has an opportunity to come through and return incredible value from your fantasy football draft? Stay tuned to find out who we're talking about. Foot Clan, now is the time. Your draft is approaching. This is the biggest fantasy football draft weekend of the entire year. You got to grab the ultimate draft kit. We've been working on this thing nonstop. After preseason week three, this thing is going to continue to be updated. Our sleepers, our busts, our breakouts, 100 plus video profiles. You want the top 200? It's in there. An app, an app to help you during your draft? It's there, baby. UltimateDraftKit.com. And Foot Clan, we have a message from NHTSA. If you think drunk driving is no big deal, you couldn't be more wrong. You could get in a crash, people could get hurt or killed, and you could get arrested, incur huge legal expenses, or even lose your job. So next time you plan on drinking, make sure you plan ahead. Designate a sober driver or use a rideshare service to get home safely. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Hey! Oh! We're back. And better than ever. It's Thursday, August 22nd. We got preseason week three tonight. Oh yes, I believe we have six ball games. Not enough. Well, they'll play on Friday and Saturday as well. I think maybe even Sunday. Not yeah. enough days. Yeah, There's Brooks a game is on naughty. Sunday. You know, if we could separate the season like that, where it's like Friday through Sunday, it basically is. Right. I don't know. It's Thursday, dark. Monday, sometimes Saturday night. Sunday, sometimes Sunday, Monday. Sometimes Happy Sunday days. is at 6 a.m. because they're playing an international game. Yeah, we could do without that. Yeah. You know, I like it. I, oh. I'm, a, I'm an early riser. <laughs> you've, so, you've been up for three hours yeah, when the right. game is on. That's yeah. 100% right. The East Coast has to like it, right? Because that's like, oh, Yo, you wake up, good time, there's a game on. Not for us. Uh, us, it's like we got to set an alarm clock to watch football. You do, yeah. Well, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's funny because preseason week three, you get into this time period where like, we're starved for, fan, uh, for fantasy football, for NFL games, for, for months and months and months. And then like the Hall of Fame game comes, and that's like half a peanut. On the, mm. on, and you just eat it because you haven't had anything to yeah. eat for you a long time. Need a little time. sodium. And then like week one, like a whole peanut. And then you got like two peanuts in week two. Week three is supposed to be this dress rehearsal, but it's really like five peanuts. But I want a meal, like, and we're getting to the point where we're going to get that. Teams, some teams are playing everybody tonight. Some are not. Some are playing nobody tonight. This weekend, the Bears, they're not going to, they're not messing with it. They're just, <laughs> that's wild, Chase man. Daniel experience wild. begins again. So today on the show, we have our sleeper picks, our individual sleeper picks, um, Let's let's get into the quick question because it's a continuation of that. What position battles are you watching the closest during week three of the preseason? Uh, for me, it's the Kansas City Chiefs running back situation. The Kansas City Chiefs have been a little bit more inclined to uh, say that they're going to play their starters. And while early in the offseason there didn't seem to be a positional battle, you have Darwin Thompson who has – seemingly leaped Carlos Hyde. You've got the whole question. Some some reporters saying they don't expect Carlos Hyde to make the roster. Um, and then, of course, Damian Williams, a high draft pick. Is this something to worry about or not? Um, you know, I would love it if Damian Williams, for his sake, if he just doesn't play in the game, they get a look at Darwin Thompson, uh, you know, and it's, and it's – it's, I'm not sure that's in the best interest of, of Damian Williams. If He's, Darwin Thompson balls out. Yeah, if, Dam if Darwin Thompson's all alone – Reports, yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about him. Sure. Um, I'm just not sure if, if that's the best thing for Damian Williams. I think if Damian Williams comes out and has five or six touches, you know, three or four touches, does something with him, that might be better. But that's one to watch, no doubt. I want to see the, the continuation of the Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Philadelphia backfield. Some in the fantasy community scooping up as much Jordan Howard late as possible. 
Others like myself love Miles Sanders and the opportunity for him right. to become a workhorse. So I want to see first snaps. Does Miles Sanders continue to beat out Jordan Howard in a yards per carry? Like he's a, he's a yard and a quarter more than Howard this preseason. Not a lot to go on metric wise. You just need to use your eyeballs, watch these guys play right. fo football. So, and I will be watching Washington. Uh, allegedly, I'm so sorry. Uh, look, allegedly. Darius Geis is going to play tonight. It's been quite the adventure, the ups and the downs of Darius Geis from his preseason debut last year. When oh, that was so nice. When he had the huge play, <clears throat> ends up tearing his AC. Well, getting hurt, he said he was fine. Then it was a torn ACL. Then there was setbacks in the recovery, infections, like big problems for Darius Geis. And he has been interesting because – fantasy football players during the off season, they were still willing to go in on the potential of Darius Geis, you know, late fourth, and then it was you kind of settled into a fifth round, a sixth round pick. He's dropped all the way to the back of the seventh round, where if he comes out and shows that he's establishing dominance of this backfield in the back of the seventh round, maybe I'm back on board because the running back Is there any way for him to really do that in one preseason game? Just establish like you, dominance? Like you said, eyeball test. It Does he look like he has his burst back? Does he look like the player who was coming out of college? Because if he does, then he can, in my opinion, can hold off Adrian Peterson. Chris Thompson will still have his role in the backfield, but I think he can hold off AP and be their primary one-two uh, down back. Guys going in that range, Kenyon Drake, Rashad Penny, Daryl Henderson, I mean – I can't imagine that he does anything tonight that I don't end up feeling like he's setting a trap in the – he's covering it with leaves for us all. <laughs> a punji pit? Yeah, a little pit where tonight, you know, carry one, he puts a bag of leaves over it, and then in the regular season, it's just not the backfield I want to sure. – I just don't imagine what I'd, he can do. But I, I'm curious. I want to know what he looks like on the field for – is it a back half of the year thing? I, and and then know. like guys going right behind him. I'm just talking running back position because there's wide receivers in there that I yeah, love. I was going to say, it sounds like I'm taking a wide receiver like, in that range. Like my man Didi, he's in there. But behind him, Royce Freeman, Jordan Howard, Kareem Hunt. Like If you're looking for a running back in that range and Darius Geis shows that he is healthy and ready to go, yeah. he, would, he would vault to the top of that, that list of running backs. My hope with this, Andy, is that – he's going to go out there with a rake and take the leaves out of the way and show the hole if he just doesn't look good. If he comes out there and is a little just hesitant. Just don't get hurt. I don't want him to get hurt. No, of my course My goodness. Not. Like, stay healthy, my friend. You've you've been through it. Get healthy, my friend. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have some news we're going to get into. Lots going on in the fantasy world. Um, remember, the great refrain, you don't win your championship at the draft. You set the foundation for the year. Subscribe to the podcast. It's five days a week. We're here all season long. Every single week we'll be bringing you our, our uh, favorite starts, um, laying out the, kind of, uh, the whole picture for your fantasy team. This show is about more than just like this guy or that guy. It's about kind of bringing the arguments forward for these players. We don't always agree, for goodness sakes. Look yeah, at yesterday's Kirk show. Kirk and carry on Johnson. Uh, That's the best part. Yeah, yeah, and so we debate those things, and we also want, like, the reality is is we want the really easy decision of, like, here's a list of 10 players, we'll put them in order, you make a pick. That's not how you win at fantasy football. The way you win at fantasy football is realizing <laughs> that, okay, that's a piece of it. We rank players. But one team, a certain pick is better for that team, mm -hmm. right? One player is more risky, one player is safer. Uh, for another team, that decision, the same two players might literally be different. So um, stay here. We're going to help you win. We're going to help you have more fun playing. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. That always helps the show. Wherever you're listening to the show, we appreciate you tuning in. And I want to remind people, the Megla Bowl, you can still enter the Megla Bowl oh, tournament. Oh, man. And Jason, we've talked about this. This is the biggest tournament Thank that you. we've ever done. <laughs> If you are a Foot Clan member, you get an entry. There's over 4,000 of you in there already. You just go to jointhefoot.com. You enter. The winner gets a 2020 Listener League spot and an invitation to hang out with us for Wild Card Weekend. Saturday. Um, wild Card Saturday. And uh, it's just going to be a blast. So check it out at jointhefoot.com. 
We've already got thousands of Foot Clan members in this tournament. It's uh, hosted by Sleeper. It's going to be a ton of fun. And then Mike mentioned the Ultimate Draft Kit right now. Get it at ultimatedraftkit.com. Let's, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right. Ian Rappaport coming out saying Melvin Gordon's holdout expected to continue into the season. Cool. Yeah, this is, I mean, just incredible insight. Breaking news letting us know that literally nothing has changed. Um, but, yeah, hey, the good news is it'll it'll hurt his draft position a little bit. Maybe you can scoop him up later. But the reality is we've said this for a long, long time. This is an ugly holdout. Melvin Gordon's going to probably stay out as many games as he can to accrue the necessary season, come back halfway through the season is my guess. But I, I just can't see them coming to contractual terms to get him out there week one or even week three, I'd be surprised. He says he's waiting for a call. So I'm just picturing he walks over every 20 minutes to his cell phone on the table, takes another glance, goes back to working out in his helmet. That's a thing he's doing now. So he, do, he, he does the whole thing. He just calls back. Oh, I was in the shower. Yeah. I, 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 I thought I heard the phone. Did you call? Did, Did you? you? Oh, I was blow drying my hair. You got the money? I might have missed it. You guys got my money? Look, the nice thing for this, and look, Ian Rappaport is doing, he's just doing his job. He's, he's squishing hope. And, well, because you should not have had hope right. at this point. The nice thing, though, is if this is going to change, it changes overnight. It's... It's a contract gets sent over, Melvin Gordon approves, and then it's done. Melvin Gordon's back. The report had been the gap is 10 to, you know, he wants $13 million a year. The team's willing to pay him $10 million a year. That's the gap. So is that gap worth six, seven, eight games? Probably. We'll find out if either team. Here, here's a solution. $11.5 million. Let's play football. So uh, guys, real, all right, real quick, guys. You're drafting Thanks. them this week. This weekend, you're drafting where you comfortable taking pure them. redraft. It's like six round. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. You're not going to get them there. All right, the card the Cardinals have signed Michael Crabtree, formerly of the Ravens, to a one year deal. Yes, um, oh. yes. Mediocre signing of the week. It might be our last time of the season to play that drop. It was worth it. Um, yeah, obviously you had uh, Kevin White uh, let go from the team. He did not get it done, and by that I mean as an NFL player. And you also had the injury to Hakeem Butler. So, I, you know, Crabtree's going to be on the field. He's going to, uh, you know, obviously they're not paying him over a million guaranteed, two and a quarter million uh, with upside to not come in and play, he's going to be a vet opposite Larry and then Christian Kirk. I wonder if this. Moves I, I don't. I don't share that thought with with you. You don't think he's going to play? I, I don't think that it's guaranteed that he's going to have any role on this team. I don't. I would be shocked if he doesn't have a role. Just you, so you've been out on Crabtree for like three years, and I last, don't. I don't think it's guaranteed. Look, you don't add veteran guys at the eleventh hour going into week three. Um. You know, those are not high priority players for your offensive system. Sure, I understand he has experience in the in the air raid and and the the concepts, but you're not like Keyshawn Johnson's going to have a bigger role than Michael Crabtree is. Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, um, those aren't the guys I'm arguing for. It, if Crabtree plays, it would be over Keyshawn Johnson. It would be the coaching staff has decided, even though he's been you know the quote star of of camp. But maybe I mean, we've seen plenty of superstars at training camp who aren't actually ready to play it when it's Sunday. So maybe maybe Crabtree comes in as the third wide receiver. All right, Anthony Miller's been out of action since August 10th. This is not great for the early season prognosis for Anthony Miller. No. He needs to move forward. The team loves him. They talk all about the mental reps he's taken and the attention to detail in the meeting room, but you need to be on the field. Anthony Miller was my sleeper pick from uh, about a week and a half ago, H had put that in, and this injury took him out. I've replaced him because I don't want to draft a guy that's going to get off to a slow start. I still think keep your eye on him, pick him up off of waivers when, when he's uh, healthy and back out there. He's definitely a, a talented receiver. All right. There was some news yesterday about the Vance dance, Vance McDonald. They asked the offensive coordinator of Pittsburgh, 
whether he would see increased playing time in 2019. He says he won't. He's never going to play the full game. That's never going to happen. Mike put his pants on so quick. Look, I've recovered. Okay, so in, initially when that came out, especially coming from the mouth of... <laughs> oh! That was that was me yesterday. And the OC, I mean, I have, it was a kick right to the nethers. After I picked myself up off the floor, the tummy ache subsided. Like, yes, he, he doesn't have to play the full game. Most tight ends aren't George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz playing 90% of the snaps. I mean, you look at... Like Evan Ingram over that second half of the year where Ingram was a great fantasy tight end, I mean, he's playing 70% of the snaps. And I still believe that Vance McDonald can get up to that. Maybe he doesn't ever play the 90% play the full game, but it just it would it would be absolutely baffling if Vance McDonald isn't playing up around the 70% of snaps. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the depth chart and say, okay, if he's not... Xavier Grimble, who... Who Not is? so nimble. Right. So yeah, I don't think they've got a choice. I mean, you need well, pass catchers out there. They'll play two tight ends. I mean, Grimble will be out there. He'll be the inline guy like Jesse James. And I don't think this is a story. The story for, for Vance McDonald is, like, is not, oh, I really hope he gets all the snaps for the team. The story for Vance McDonald is there's this giant gaping hole of targets with Antonio Brown leaving the team. And snaps at the tight end position. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, even if even if you say, hey, he's going to be on the field, Grimble will be in-line blocker, um, just like Jesse James was snap-wise, I'm more interested in the fact that Big Ben now cares about throwing the ball to Vance McDonald. It's not so much, you know, any of the, oh, he's not going to get an extra snap. I doubt that this offensive coordinator is going to be going, well, that's, that you, you did that many snaps, right, right? and you're off the field. Last year was his healthiest year. So yeah, and, and yes, your point is well taken, Andy, that if he just plays the same amount of snaps that he did last year, he'll still get more targets because Antonio Brown is not out there playing those same snaps. If 15 touchdowns? Is that what Antonio Brown had last year? Yes, sir. So uh, he'll have zero for them this year. Bold take. So yeah, red zone opportunities. You, you take a tight end, give him three more touchdowns on the snap count that Vance had last year. Yeah. I still think there's reason for optimism. Yes, I have I recovered, and I'm still there. I have not adjusted Vance McDonald. Well, the dance would have gotten out of control if if, uh, if he came if, out. If said, Randy Finkner <laughs> yes. said, we're never – he did the Bruce Arians with Godwin and said, he will never leave the field. Oh, man. That would be an inappropriate dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this was interesting to me. Jay Glazer reporting on watching Cooper Cup at practice says he timed better in every athletic test post ACL tear. Said it was amazing what Cooper Cup looks like. So we've done this ping pong ball a little bit with Cup. It's super excited. He's the best value in fantasy because all three of those guys are valuable and he's the latest one. Then it's he might be a slow start, more two tight end sets, give him a chance to recover from the ACL. Then it's, oh, he looks better than he did before the ACL. He's a young player. He was a red zone threat. Where do you fall on the pendulum swing of Cooper Cup? I, I've been fully back for a couple of weeks since when he went into training camp, was fully cleared to practice right away. I mean, that's that's a huge signal, number one. And then just injury people that I trust have been watching him saying, Cooper Cup looks like he is he's back to health. Of course, he still carries the, the ACL risk of these guys – tend to hurt a hamstring at some point, usually early on in the season. So um, that risk exists, but that's baked into his ADP where you're drafting Cooper Cup right now. If if he didn't have any of those problems, he'd be going at least a round earlier. All right. A couple hype train things. Alexander Madison, a, a little hype report yesterday. Alexander, Alexander Madison. His the name is Alexander the, Madison. This is Jay Glazer, by the way, who did the cup report. He's a big fan of adjectives. I mean, big ones. Um, can't stop raving about the Vikings. Alexander Madison. The Vikings. Not Jay Glazer. The Vikings. Well, Jay Glazer reported that the Vikings were raving to him. I'll just say the report about, is a lot different if we're like, guys, Jay Glazer he's loves unbothered. Alexander Madison. Sure, sure. <laughs> Front row tickets. His point was the, the hype train here is that the team is is on board Alexander Madison. He's a good player. And this is not very different from New Orleans in as much as Mark Ingram had a role on the roster. Last, last year, Latavius Murray had a role on the roster. Dalvin Cook has not been the pinnacle of health. 
Alexander Madison starting to look like a very interesting flyer in the Jalen Samuels category of fantasy drafts. Yeah, look, he could he could have standalone value. I know that all uh, like we've it, you guys especially have been very high on Dalvin Cook. The inside Minnesota source is talking about the entire offense is going to run run around Dalvin Cook. And I look, I'm if you want to if you're still on that side, that's perfectly fine. But if the team is in fact really falling in love with their third round running back pick, it just it creates a little bit more probability that maybe Dalvin Cook doesn't actually achieve that workload that they've been talking about. It's to me it's all about goal line. You know, the, sure. the reports were Dalvin Cook was going to be the goal line guy this year. If that's the case for fantasy, he's, he's going, going to be, be great. Unbelievable. Has a chance to be, you know be in the top three. But if he's not, if he's splitting that fifty percent of the time with Alexander Madison, who is built for that um, then that that's going to take the upside. That's going to take the top off of it, and and that does concern me. I've tried to reach out to some Minnesota insiders. We'll uh, stay tuned. Hmm. There, there's opportunity there for sure. So that was today's <laughs> news and notes from Sleeper. Play on a fantasy sports platform that does not suck. Modern design, infinite customization, support for redraft, dynasty. Check out the Sleeper app. Now, before we get into our sleepers, we're, we're doing sleeper picks on the show today. We've got to thank today's sponsors, and this episode of Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head and & Shoulders and Walmart. Now, Mike, I want to be clear about something with you. What's Very that? clear. Using Head & Shoulders every day, it's great offense for your hair, Mike. Look, Andy, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I hear what you're saying about the offense, but Head & Shoulders, it's great defense for the flakes. But uh, at the same time, what I'm saying is it's offense. It's, it's defense. I know I said we don't always agree, but it's offense. It's it's defense, Andy. We'll, we'll shift gears. Chunky peanut butter. Creamy peanut butter. That's ridiculous. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and honey. What is happening? That's asinine. You're stupid. Uh, best hair in the NFL, Travis Kelsey. Odell Beckham. Yeah, you might be right there. Pop. Soda. I got that from my mom. We call it <laughs> pop around the house. Dogs. Okay, dogs. We, <laughs> we finally agree. <laughs> agree right, on head and shoulders. Ba back to head and shoulders. It's like a two-point conversion for your hair, Mike. Andy, we talked about this. <laughs> it's like a safety against flakes. I think it's more offensive. Look, defense for a flake-free scalp. Check out Head & Shoulders on Walmart.com <laughs> or look for Head & Shoulders blue and white bottle at your local Walmart store. And no matter where you fall on that debate, they'll give you 100% flake-free scalp, offense or defense. Check out Head & Shoulders, Walmart.com or... Uh, look for it. Find it at your local Walmart store. Exactly. And Foot Clan. Wow. World of Warcraft Classic is coming. You give me the tingles. Blizzard Entertainment has been hard at work restoring and recreating the original world of Azeroth as it was in the earliest days, just as you remember it, right down to the last painstaking detail. We are talking Leroy Jenkins in his heyday. Leroy We're talking Jenkins. UBRS runs. Look. Andy and I have we have lived the world of Warcraft life. Oh, we know that you have. We've heard we heard the response when we were talking about it. It was, it. A, great, uh, okay. it was a great it, couple days, decades. <laughs> to interject, every twenty minutes to forty minutes, we have the music playing from Andy's computer as he's logged in to just play the music. It's coming soon. I want that nostalgia. World of War, the classic. It's coming back. Gather up the party. Explore the depths of Black Rock. Gear up. Face the Fire Lord in Molten Core. WoW Classic is included with your regular World of Warcraft subscription at no additional cost, so you and your friends can raid Blackware, uh, Blackwing Lair one night, then head into the latest Battle for Azeroth content the next. WoW subscribers can reserve their character name now, so you're ready to go the moment the servers go live. Check out wowclassic.com slash fantasyfootballers for all the details. Sleepers. All right, yesterday we had the bus show. We had the breakout show the day before. Now we're on to sleepers. We've each got a couple of names we want to bring forward. Jason, I'm going to set the ball on the tee for you. Oh, you can okay. go first. Sure thing. I've, I've, got a, I've got a twofer here. I've got a twofer. I've got uh, two running backs I'm going to throw out really, really quick because one I just want to name is Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown is a guy that is the actual backup to Todd Gurley. It's not Daryl Henderson. Yes. 
But Daryl Henderson is going in the seventh round, and Malcolm Brown is late 13th, a.k.a. undrafted. So get Malcolm Brown. But the actual guy that I, I am very interested in, also very late in drafts, is Damian Harris. Damian Harris, the rookie running back for the Patriots, they spent a day two pick on him in the third round. After spending a first-round pick on Sony Michelle last year, winning a Super Bowl, Damian Harris, look, everyone loves Josh Jacobs, right? He's the number one back in the league, but he was the – essentially, he split time with Damian Harris at Alabama. He was the backup to Damian Harris because Damian Harris is a really talented back. He has rave reviews early on in camp. He got injured for a little while during camp, and then the buzz went away. But now he's back. This last preseason game, he looked awesome. The other players came out and talked about how awesome he was. Rex Burkhead came out and was like, the, the dude's been great. And that's whose job he's taken. <laughs> Sorry, Rex. But the upside with Damian Harris, we always talk about rookie running backs. They, they, they can explode um, You know, two and a quarter per year, finish as an RB1. Sony Michelle has a wee bit of an injury history. Tore his ACL in high school, missed games at Georgia for a fractured shoulder blade, an ankle injury, another knee injury, then gets drafted, was expected to fall in the draft because of his degenerative knee issue. Um, then he ended up missing the beginning of the season to a knee issue, then missed a couple more games later in the season. Already this year has had another knee scope. It's not going away. His knee's not like... Oh, good. I got a new knee. I'm good to go forever. So Damian Harris is a very late round pick that I think could get involved more than is expected. I think he could take some of that Rex Burkhead passing work. I know yesterday you talked about not being in love with James White. I think Damian Harris is a reason uh, against James White. Well, but I mean, the these are sleepers. I just wish you yeah. could talk about Damian Harris without talking down about Sonny Michelle. Well, but the, he's the upside. The, the upside of Damian Harris is should something happen to Sony Michelle, then you've got a true workhorse back. I think Damian Harris can be good even while Sony is there. Look at Rex Burkhead in the playoffs this last season. He had three touchdowns in two games, and they they and that was while Sony was balling out. This is a team that's going to run the ball a lot. They're going to have a ton of touchdown opportunities. Damian Harris is great around the goal line, so he, that's why like we don't draft. We don't love drafting handcuffs specifically, right? Like because you don't know when a guy's going to go down. It's usually not going to be week one. It's as the season goes on. If I am going to draft a handcuff, the two things that I want, one is a, a known injury history with the running back ahead of him. So like Gurley and Sony Michelle, there's actual reason to believe there could be cause early in the season or standalone value. And I think that's where Damian Harris will surprise. I think Damian Harris – could have weekly standalone value if he's getting a couple receptions and getting goal line work. That's good enough to to be a flex player. That's bold. I think it's bold to call him a flex. I don't mind the sleeper pick. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things shake out. I tend to the Sony Michelle injury debate. I feel like we are either aware of 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 the problem in a way that Bill Belichick isn't, and I tend to like think that Bill Belichick and this offense and where they drafted him believes it's not as big of a problem as people speculate. Would you say that if they believed it was a problem on their day two pick, they would use another pick <laughs> on a running back? Because they did. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. If the, I don't think that that's a regret pick, but I think Damian Harris is very talented. I just don't know how the depth chart is going to shake out. We know Brandon Bolden is active on game days. Be a special teamer. Yeah, uh, because of special teams. Yeah. So then you look at who's active on game days. Are you going to have three running backs active and uh, along with Brandon Bolden? So uh, opportunity is 100% there for if Sonny Michelle has problems and you believe Damian Harris is the most talented back outside of Sonny Michelle, then that cream will rise to the top and maybe he's the guy that does what Sonny did if Sonny's on the, on the shelf. So definitely sleeper upside there for Harris. Mike, do you want to take the reins? I know you've, you've been sure. got a bad case of something. Uh, I do have a bad case, and we're talking this is a deep sleeper. So if, if the bench is a little bit larger, this is a guy you can look at at the very end of your draft. And PPR, this is a little bit more tuned into the PPR crowd. And I'm talking about infected with the Beasles, Cole Beasley, who if you follow this show for any amount of time, 
My love for this player has been professed many times, hearkening back to uh, the year when he had 98 targets and on that season put up 75 receptions for 833 yards and five touchdowns. And that year was ranked by Pro Football Focus as their number eight wide receiver on the year. I start off with that uh, so people understand he's actually a good wide receiver. And if you put him in a position to succeed, he can do it. Flash forward to I, I, he got signed by the Buffalo Bills in free agency. He seemed like it was this is left for dead for any kind of fantasy value. The way that Buffalo has been playing, the way that Josh Allen played, where he would just chuck it deep. He just it, Josh Allen never seemed like he was going to. Or last year, he didn't like those short passes. He wanted to go deep. Now he's talking about this is a quote from Josh Allen. We run a similar offense to the Patriots because their OC, in fact, spent four years in New England before he went down to Alabama to be their OC and then got promoted to be an NFL offensive coordinator. Look at what has happened. Week Preseason week two had five receptions in two drives with Josh Allen. Allen is actually growing. Like, Of course, he's growing as a quarterback, but that involves – Taking some of those short throws, taking some of those easy plays, not always having to go deep. There was an emphasis of, of Josh Allen taking it easy and, and dumping it to the slot wide receiver, similar to the way that the New England Patriots used Julian Edelman. I'm not expecting Julian Edelman levels of production, but in a PPR league, with your last pick, if you're grabbing a receiver who's catching six to eight receptions every single week, I mean, that's, that's free money. Every single best ball league I've been doing with my 18th pick, I'm grabbing Cole. So Beasley. you're you're in. I'm you got a, the infection. I, I am in. If you if you get PPR in, and obviously that's a deep league, right? That's your 18th right. round. Not everybody's going to be doing that. I don't know if Cole Beasley will be relevant enough to crack into you know a, a, a starting lineup. But it's it's worth noting what's happened in the preseason. They gave him a lot of money. Four years, thirty million dollars. They they gave more years, more guaranteed money to Cole Beasley than they did to John Brown. It's an interesting situation because Beasley's been in the NFL for going on this is like his eighth season, right? And six catches a week, just for context, is ninety six catches a season. So that would beat his career high by about twenty if he just if he caught the ball six times a week. PPR leagues, he's one of those like your team has been beaten up. You need to throw somebody out there and not get a goose egg. Beasley seems like the reason they invested in him will guarantee some level of production in that offense, I mean, does the, it not? There, yeah, there, there are leagues that play three wide receivers and a flex in PPR leagues. And that flex position, I think Cole Beasley has a chance to end up in there on a weekly basis. Now, these are sleepers. Preseason week three could show up and just absolutely rain, rain turds on this parade. But I think it's very possible that – Cole Beasley is going to be very surprising. Never want to be in a turd storm. No, <laughs> no, you do not. A turd storm? Yeah, those are that would be unfortunate. Have your umbrella. Uh, gross. <laughs> All right, my sleeper pick. Number I will brave this storm. <laughs> no, I will run. <laughs> I will run and I will live. Give me an awning. Michael Gallup. Woo! Michael Gallup <laughs> is my first sleeper pick. His average draft position right now is in the 12th round. There, It's the absence of Beasles, in a way, and also the presence of Kellen Moore. I mean, Kellen Moore's offense is going to be so much different than what they were running with Scott Linehan and Cole Beasley. More motion, more downfield throws. <laughs> is that Brooks? Brooks yeah. just Woo! chimed. You, you believe it, right? Oh, it's totally exciting. different offense. More bunch formations, more downfield throws, more innovation, more motion, and less options in the passing game than, you know, no no more Cole Beasley with the target counts that he has. Yes, Randall Cobb is there, but by all accounts, Michael Gallup has been the wide receiver one throughout camp and in the, in the preseason games. Amari Cooper's been on the shelf. Gallup has taken advantage of the opportunity. This is a former third-round pick last year, and... um you know, storylines around Dallas, he's in the top, you know, two or three coming out of camp. So right now you have a team where Beasley had 65 receptions. They're gone. There ain't no Zeke right now. That's 77 receptions. Cabo! And I know Tony Pollard, hype train, hype season, whatever. Michael Gallup has a great opportunity. And if this plantar fasciitis stuff 
is worse than we think with Amari Cooper, and he misses time, Oof. and Michael Gallup's the one on a Kellen Moore, Dak Prescott downfield throwing offense where he can go up and make the right very now, interesting. Talk around camp. They're tuned in with the back shoulder throw. Michael Gallup's a big boy. You think about that, those back shoulder connections that quarterbacks and wide receivers can have down the field. I'm just optimistic that Michael Gallup will have standalone value potentially and then all the upside of what if with Amari Cooper's foot. What if Amari Cooper misses week one? Oh, man. You can start Gallup. What if he misses – what if he plays week one, re-injures himself, he's out four weeks with plantar fasciitis. Ooh. There's a lot of upside to Gallup, so he's, he's one of my favorite sleepers. Oh, yeah. Can't nobody tell me nothing if, if Amari <laughs> Cooper was out. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right. No, I, I like that. I, I actually think that uh, Gallup has been really underlooked. Uh, you know, on this podcast, we haven't really talked about him. Um, but I'm worried a little bit about whatever the foot issue is with Amari Cooper. And, you know, with Zeke out there or, or not out there, Michael Gallup could end up, uh, you know, being a horse to rely on. Oh, I'm going to go with Mark Andrews as my second sleeper pick, a tight end that I oh so regrettably traded in our Dynasty League to you, Andy, for John Ross way too early. Uh, that was like a February trade. Yeah, it was. and, and you know My favorite. <clears throat> well, you won that one. You mean? Wait, let me make you a great offer. Oh, great. AJ Green is gone. Or is out right now? Sure. I will trade you John Ross uh -huh. for Mark Andrews. Now, I thought if you had A.J. Green to send along for Mark mm. Andrews, now we could talk. So, But I'm a huge – I mean, Mark Andrews tied in for the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, tied in for the Baltimore Ravens. It was a rookie last year. He didn't get a lot of pub because they drafted two tight ends, and he wasn't the first one they drafted. They drafted Hayden Hurst, uh, a first-round draft pick. Uh, Mark Andrews was also a, a pretty high draft pick himself. And you didn't know who to trust. Hurst, Hayden Hurst got injured a little bit. Mark Andrews really looked great. I mean, he had the same yak ability that George Kittle had that was so dominant in 2018. For a rookie season since 1990, he's behind only O.J. Howard in the highest yards per reception. He's got an ability out there that you really desire for fantasy tight ends, the ability to break those long, you know, stiff arm a guy and take it to the house. And if you look at just what he did in his rookie season, I mean... Yeah, very impressive. He had the seventh most receiving yards for any rookie tight end since the year what 2000. Was his total? What was his total? So his total on the, on season, the season was... Not the, not the pace, just the was total. Was 552. I think, he, I think he gets 800 this year. I Look, in his rookie season, once Lamar Jackson took over that, that second half... That's the pace you were talking about? He was on pace for 716. That's fi it's 50 a game, and a guy with a big yards you know, uh, per catch at the tight end position, what do you got? One big play, two, two catches, 25 yards each, you're done. I mean, 800 yards could happen, and he's been the, the star of camp. I'm 100. I love arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you here. There's no chance Aww. that I disagree with Mark Andrews. Yeah, I mean, it, he costs you nothing. He's your last. He is my safety valve at tight end. Like, I, you know, I'd love to do the Vance dance or, you know, get one of the top three guys, maybe Evan Ingram if he's, if he's slipping to a, to a good value. But if I don't get one of those guys, I just – I go, okay, I'll get Mark Andrews with my last pick. I am totally fine with that because he, he has something that other tight ends, they don't even have the option to do. He could be the number one target for his team. Like, that's a very realistic outlook. Well, here, here's what you have to st state out loud for him to be the number one. Uh, Miles Boykin won't be the number one option. Mm, Marquise Brown won't be the number one option. Right. Willie Sneed won't be the number one option. Uh, honestly, Willie Sneed is Sneed his biggest could, competition. Uh, well, I, I, it's fair, but it, to your point. Yeah, listen to what we just said. Willie Sneed is his biggest competition for and targets. And the fact that he's still the number two tight end on the team. Because Nick Boyle is is still around, even if he has has usurped Hayden Hurst, I'm just I, sure. I'm with you guys. I like Mark Andrews as a sleeper, but uh, you you can't paint paint the picture just as all roses here for Mark Andrews. He's, but the there there is a there is an outcome where Mark Andrews continues to play forty percent of the snaps. But and that's a hundred percent fair. And that he's a thirteenth round pick. He's an undrafted guy in a lot of leagues. So my mental change has been to go. Go for Mark Andrews over 
Trey Burton or yes. or Jordan Reed or Greg Olson. Um, you know, Delaney, I'll draft ahead of Mark Andrews. But the other guys, it's like, what do I want out of week one or two at that tight end position? Because I'm afraid if I dra draft Trey Burton instead of Mark Andrews, then I get two catches for 22 yards week one. Okay, do I hang on to Trey Burton for that break oh, the breakout game? Three for, three for 45 in week two. Whereas Andrews, it's like, is he on the field is he for seventy five percent like, of the snaps? What's happening? Is this sure. is this is Lamar Jackson a better passer now? More consistent? Does he throw the ball more? Is he rushing six, seven times, eight times a game instead of ten to twelve? A lot of un the variables excite me about Andrews. <clears throat> right. So, so there you go. Rosie or not, thirteenth round picks don't burn you if you get them wrong. Sure. Okay. All right, Mike, you're up. All right, the guy I want to talk about running back for the Los Angeles Chargers, Justin Jackson. We just talked about earlier on the show. They expect Melvin Gordon and the whole talk about action Jackson. Ooh, yes, action Justin Jackson. Yeah, they expect Melvin Gordon to be holding out. He can hold out for eight games, and we have seen that. We have seen that shift in Austin Eckler. Uh, Eckler, rightly so, his ADP has been on an absolute rocket ship. He's up, you know, like fifth round, sixth round. Justin Jackson has seen a rise in his ADP, but he's still chilling. At the back of the 10th round, we already know who he is. When he had the opportunity, or when when Melvin Gordon got hurt, and then he was getting some snaps because Eckler was the guy. Eckler also got hurt. They went full workhorse roll with Justin Jackson. 16 for 58 with a touchdown, 3 for 27 through the air. I mean, they're not outrageously great numbers, but he played 75% of the snaps against Kansas City. They already trust him in that role should it arise. ESPN reporter Eric Williams is talking about in practice. It's a 50-50 timeshare. Now it hasn't been that in the preseason. The, the snaps. I think have, it'll be close to that in the in the regular season. I the, completely. I'm on board. Right. That's in. That's what Eric Williams is fully convinced that it will be close to that. The preseason snaps have been heavily in Austin Eckler's favor. But what if it's closer to 50-50 and you just spent a back of the tenth, early eleventh round mm -hmm. pick? on a running back for the Chargers. I mean that that's incredible value. Like those guys and and you draft Justin Jackson in the eleventh. Melva Gordon signs right before week one. No harm, no foul. Move on. Go grab another sleeper off the waiver wire. But what Justin Jackson could be in those first eight weeks is is an incredible steal in drafts. And I I, I would say that strategy holds for Tony Pollard, yes, as, Pollard well. as well, and it, it, there's there's no harm, no foul. You, your tenth round picks, m more often than not, they're 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 gonna bust. Like you know, Cortland Sutton, he's in the tenth round. He could be great. He's coming into year two. He's got, I, I, but he could also just be irrelevant. Joe Flacco's number two. Everybody you're taking in those rounds. It has enormous well, we, risk. We, so the upside for the beginning of the season to have Tony Pollard or uh, it's the Justin run. Jackson. It's the running back depth argument. It's the tips yeah. and tr trick show where running back depth is dumb until it's not. If you have that guy on your bench, thirty what thirty three percent of the first round has been injured over the last four years, maybe more. There are opportunities out there. You might as well pile up on your roster. Now I have. An, I'm gonna close out our sleepers. I feel like I've been the office mosquito with this guy, just just pestering people's ears for for the last couple weeks. He's been written in here, and the news lately has been very positive. It has. But I will warn you before I get into it, the player's name is Darwin Thompson, running back, Kansas City Chiefs. I'm worried about the average draft position of Darwin Thompson. I'm worried about what you might have to pay to believe what I'm saying. But right now, ADP of 1008, I'm cool there. Darwin Thompson provides uh, incredible upside, in my opinion, on the best offense in football, Yesterday, the news came out that he has leapfrog Carlos Hyde in the depth chart, a sixth-round rookie. People want to say, well, that's not a lot of draft pedigree. You're not wrong. But the, the sample size of what scouts got from Darwin Thompson to go on to draft this player, it was minimal. He played one year at Division I. He averaged 6.8 a carry, but he did it in, what, the Mountain West. Right. So they've got to see him flexing on Instagram and a year in the Mountain West. And... He fits this system, and he has passed every eye test that I've watched every snap of preseason of Darwin Thompson. I've watched a lot of camp film of Darwin Thompson picking up the blitz. Here's some quotes from the team just to give you the context. You can buy into the hype or not. 
Andy Reid, he's able to see the blitz, which is a big thing for young guys. Good vision in the run game. Pretty good understanding in the pass game. Really focused. No nonsense. He made a play in preseason where he ran this this route. I don't know if you saw the open field catch 20 yards down the field. Yes. I, I'm trying to think of players that I know that can do that. And it was uh, Darren Sproles and Tariq Cohen came to mind. I mean, he's a smaller guy at 5'8", but he's 200 pounds. He's about 12 pounds under where, where Damian Williams is. And this offense is so opened up. This offensive system with Pat Mahomes and how accountable you have to be on the back in the secondary affords I, I think the reasons Damian Williams was great last year. All Kansas of those City Chiefs. Yeah, all those reasons. <laughs> sure. It's I mean if they, if Darwin Thompson gets an opportunity to be a significant piece of the offense, which I now believe is a real possibility, you get him in the tenth round, the eleventh round, in a lot of home leagues, the last round the last pick, nobody knows the name, nobody knows who he is, sixth-round pick. I just really am excited about it because I think he's the most purely talented player on that team. He does not have the experience of Damian Williams. He will not supplant Damian Williams in his entirety. I don't think there's any situation where a healthy Damian Williams is cast aside for some kind of workload for a 5'8", 200-pound back. It's not going to happen. But it's in the same category of Tony Pollard, Justin Jackson, late-round guys, attach them to an offense, um, their running backs coach comes out. He says, look, he's strong. He packs a punch. He can protect. He can run routes. He can run the ball. I'm happy with what we have. And then to go and place him above a veteran like Carlos Hyde, I'm, that, I'm optimistic for the future of Darwin Thompson. I am. I want him in my leagues. That's the the leapfrogging, leapfrogging frogging of Carlos Hyde. That's the big deal to me <laughs> <laughs> because like it, Andy Reid, is this a leap throbbing situation? No, I said leap? a throbbing. How dare leap. you? Okay. A throbbing was my flub. Okay. Andy Reid is uh, he is true to his depth chart. I mean, you you saw this Kareem Hunt when, when they drafted him in the third round. They moved up to get Kareem Hunt. They were crazy excited about him, but Kareem Hunt became the starter because Spencer Ware went out to a season-ending injury. You, the same thing happened last year. Once Kareem Hunt is off the team, they go to the carcass of Spencer Ware, and then he gets hurt, and that's how Damian Williams was able to come in, and, and he shined in that system. Carlos Hyde never made sense to me on this Kansas City team. The dude, we have just a huge sample of who Carlos Hyde is. It's a fine running back. I mean, he, was, he was great earlier on in his career, but he was, he's never been a good pass catcher. Yes, he had the year where he was with Kyle Shanahan, and he totaled a lot of receptions, but he was very inefficient doing it. Another running back, like if that was Darwin Thompson with those receptions, the results would have been a lot better for your NFL Car team. Carlos Hyde is the running back equivalent of his former teammate Michael Crabtree. Sure. He is hanging on to with, with nails and fingertips to the remaining moments of his career. And the whispers... That I mean, they started a couple weeks ago. That Carlos Hyde may not actually make this roster. That was that was a bit jarring at the time because he, Darwin Thompson is a six round running back. It was a, it's a long path. Or it seemingly was a long path for him to have some relevance. But that that path has been he hit the shortcut, and he just he went right around Carlos Hyde. So I'm I, I am very on board, even though I love Damian Williams. I'm very on board with grabbing Darwin Thompson late in your drafts. Um, there's some news this morning. The Redskins turned down a trade oh, from with the, the Patriots for the – a first-round pick was offered for Trent Williams. Wow, that stinks. That breaks uh, – my heart throbs for Trent Williams. <laughs> it throbs. And I want him as an Arizona Cardinals fan and a, a, somebody that wants to protect the life – of Kyler Murray, I would love to get a left tackle in. <laughs> and You're just concerned with his well-being, not so much the success of your hometown team. Now, here's the thing. Would they turn down a first-round pick from the Cardinals? Because <laughs> the Patriots' first-round pick is not it's like quite the same as the Cardinals' first-round pick. Um, no, they wouldn't. They wouldn't turn him down. But then the Cardinals would have to go pay him, right? Sure. Big-time money? He should be paid big-time money. He's one of the best left tackles in the league. Yeah. I... It, their response was that it wasn't enough. I it I'd be curious if the Cardinals came out and did that. That would be a awesome. a welcome sight for David Johnson truthers out there. So, um, 
Before we close out, I want to jump into a couple mailbag questions. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, Mason. I went with the guns, No, you, if you didn't see it. Blocka, blocka. If you didn't see it on YouTube, which you can, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Mike was doing the... Uh, when did the, the sound effect for for a gun turn into blocka, blocka? Oh, I don't know, but it was a great moment in history. Those were guns, but they were like jazz guns. I yeah, mean, you brought well, them out like in... A little, a little more JB, Jack Black style. Okay. Mason in Charleston wrote in, he says, I'm completely new to fantasy this year. Welcome to the show. Um, he wants to know, should should the bench be filled with only running backs and wide receivers at the draft? Yep, pretty much, yes. I mean, when you draft two quarterbacks and two tight ends, usually you're wasting a spot, um, especially with tight ends. I can't imagine a situation where I would think I really want to take two shots at, you know, two shots at crappy tight ends, or I got, I've got a great tight end, but you know what? I want another crappy one. Like, I, I can't imagine that situation. There are situations in the, certain leagues where taking a second quarterback would make sense. Yeah, if you're, if you're in a 14-team, 16-team, where it, the depth at quarterback is going to go down and you can't, you can't get that full stream of the waiver wire where there's four to five options every single week, then, yeah, I'm fine having two quarterbacks and, and streaming between those two guys. And, and know your league, because you, you could be in a 12-team league where everyone drafts two quarterbacks. Somebody takes three quarterbacks and, and right. whatever. Or if you draft Andrew Luck because he's dropping late and then you want to, you know, I've talked about that, stacking Andrew Luck and Josh Allen together. There are reasons. But for the most part, almost every team I ever draft, one quarterback, one tight end. Uh, Dylan in Maryland, does it concern you at all that it's been pretty silent hype train wise for Josh Jacobs? Even Hard Knox has had zero screen time for him, and um, nope. You know they normally try to exaggerate players flashing in camp. Nope. I mean, H <clears throat> if you're HBO, would you rather spend time <laughs> on <clears throat> on that on their safety and Antonio Brown, who are absolute characters and and great television? Or Josh Jacobs, who, even though he's a first-round running back, he, maybe he's boring for the screen. I mean, it, they're producing an entertainment show. So, no, I, I, Josh Jacobs is great. Tommy in Chicago, full PPR. Would you be all right going Juju Connor at the turn? Yes. Juju Connor combo. I, I would. I would be okay. It's going like a Juju nightmare Connor. for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're two, two players that I'm below ADP on. Put them both on my team on a team that I'm, I'm below. Uh, that I don't believe in as much because I believe the Ravens and the, the Browns will be better in that division and it, now give them both to me. It's funny because obviously, you you know, part of the narrative when we've talked about the Steelers and I've been pro Steelers, you've been uh, the beginning of the end for the Steelers. Yes. Um, is is the clear and obvious reality that, look, you lost Antonio Brown and you lost Lev Bell. Like, these hurt. And then I was talking to Mike the other day. I was like, is that, like watching Hard Knocks and see what's – did they really – like? Could this be a positive situation for the Steelers to have lost those two uh, the personalities, head cases? I mean, obviously, you lose a lot on the field. But, like, maybe it was just a good move from a good organization to say, I'm willing to move on, Antonio. I just think it's going to be interesting to watch Juju develop because this is not as simple as people want to make it. He ran 59% of his uh, snaps out of the slot last year. He's trying to move to the outside and be the guy on the outside – Generally, I mean, we saw this with Adam Thielen towards the very end of the year. Lower amount of snaps from the slot over the back half. Lower target share. Lower opportunity in the offense. Juju's a super talented player. I just think he's one of the guys that fits the very – there's variables in play that aren't there for some of the upper echelon players. doesn't mean that – I mean, if you want to choose him over o, OBJ, like I'm not going to – like go ahead. OBJ's got his own variables. Juju's got them. But he's not in that category to me of, of uh, Devontae Adams, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones. Uh, so it'll be interesting. But please don't put these guys on my team. But if you want to take them both, I know these two guys will be thumbs up all the way. We want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Yesterday, an Eric Ebron signed Colts jersey went for $49. Mm. Go to pristineauction.com, register a free account, Use the code BALLERS. Let them know we sent you. You'll get $5 towards any sports memorabilia purchase. We do live shows throughout the summer. We got one on Saturday, and we always – three or four people are always bringing some of their pristine swag. Such incredible deals. Just register. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. And a final reminder, I mean, this is go time. Saturday is the biggest draft day of the year. Our League of Record draft is on Sunday. 
we will have some footage of that draft to bring <clears throat> you. Indeed. And, like, and, and this is the time to get into the Ultimate Draft Kit so that you are prepared for that draft, have the app, be able to mark players off, see uh, every little bit counts. Pro tip. Pro tip. I was just going to bring it up. Mike and I just participated in the NFL League One uh, celebrity draft. It was awesome because we had an iPad. We had the app on the iPad, and hoo-ha, it was <laughs> incredible to be able to use that, see all the tiers, mark the it's players a really off. really heart, heart frob moment. So, if, so I'm just telling you, if you know a lot of people out there, you've already got the app, you've already got everything, and you have an iPad, but you haven't put it two and two together. Download it on the on the <laughs> iPad and and use it to help you in your draft. It was great. And that's ultimatedraftkit.com. You can get in there. It's instant access, ultimatedraftkit.com. That'll do it for today's show. We got a value show coming up tomorrow. So, very excited to uh, talk about some of the best values in fantasy football. Stay with us and enjoy the games tonight. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, this episode was brought to you by Head and Shoulders in Walmart. No matter where you fall on the offense defense debate, Head and Shoulders will give you a 100% flake free scalp. I still say it's offense, Mike. We've been over this, Andy. It's <laughs> it's the defense. By the way, did you know that they uh, insured Troy Polamalu's hair for a million dollars in 2010? It's probably not enough. That is uh, some impressive hair. Check out Head & Shoulders at walmart.com or look for it at your local Walmart store.